Hey, good evening. What's going on? Come on in. Come on in. Let the class begin. Welcome, y'all. Welcome. Let's go. Happy. Look, we made it through today. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right. So let's get started. We won't tarry long. Y'all know I like to tarry. Y'all already know that's my thing. I won't tarry long. So let's get started. So if you don't know, hey, what's up, Jure? So I am the educator's educator. I help educators connect with students that don't look like them in many different ways. What's going on? Yes, it is hump day. Yes, yes. All right, just speaking, checking out the comment lounge. So let me show y'all our way around. So we have the comment lounge. What's going on, Donna? So we have the comment lounge, which is our comments. But we, instead of the teacher's lounge, we call it the comment lounge because the teachers can't get together, but we do it verbally. All right, virtually, shall I say, and we type in our chat. And as well... We also, um, we we highlight some comments every now and then. Oh, that is so cool. Janine says, I actually played the bell today for my class. They loved it. Ah! <laughs> That's good stuff right there. That's good. That's good. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Vet. All right, y'all. Hello there. What's going on? All right, let me share my screen. Let's get rolling. All right, let's go. I am that teacher. If you don't know what that teacher is, that teacher is one that goes beyond the walls of their classroom to impact their students. And they don't mind going to the next level. And usually at school, everybody refers to them as that teacher. Oh, she that teacher. Oh, she that teacher. Yes, I am that teacher that would go beyond for my students. So yes, there's nothing wrong with being that teacher. All right. So that's what this, this series is all about, how to be that teacher. And that's the title of my new book, Becoming That Teacher. Just wanted to share that. Y'all the first person. I hadn't shared that with anyone yet. So now y'all know. All right, let's go. So do me a favor. Repost and tag a teacher. Repost, tag a teacher. Repost, tag a teacher. Hey, repost, tag a teacher. What? Repost, tag a teacher. <laughs> let's get it. My laugh be tickling me, girl. All right, so our challenge. So know that it is all right to struggle. We talked about the struggle. The struggle is real, but we talked about it yesterday. We talked about the struggle. So in the meantime, don't forget, tag the teacher. Let me know you tag the teacher. Let me know in the comment lines. Let me know if you shared. Let me see a name or something. All right. So it's all right to struggle because as educators, we struggle because we love our kids so much. It's not just a regular job to us. It is next level. So we have to make sure that we are really... Um, not sacrificing ourselves, but not feeling bad because we give so much, because we do so much for our kids. It's okay. It's okay to do. It's okay. I promise y'all it's okay. Let's get it. I love it, Janine. Thank you for sharing on your timeline. I appreciate that. All right. Sometimes we have to connect our heart with our brain. Sometimes our heart has to catch up with our brain. Hey, Tanya, what's going on? So think about that. Our heart has to catch up with our brains. What does that mean when I say your heart has to catch up with your brain? So think about it because your heart wants to give the world, but your brain says, should we do that or shouldn't we do it? But that's where we got into that struggle. But there's ways to make sure that your heart and your brain get plugged together so our kids can go to the next level. And we as educators need to go to the next, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we need to go to the next level as well. I was looking for my water. I don't see it. All right. No worries. We'll keep going. I will be just fine. All right. So look, <clears throat> 2019, that's what school schools closed in 2019. And then 2020, schools closed. 2021, we still on close. But look at the difference. So you have final exam. Now you have kids that's all on laptops. That's what it looks like. They're all on laptops. So we have to figure out what does that look like? How do we still fulfill their needs? I was, we so worried about the academic piece. We really have to look at how do we fulfill those other needs. And I know this is a buzzword, but we're going to dig into it a little bit. So tonight we're talking about social and emotional learning, but the love of it. How can you bring the love in? And I know it is truly a buzzword for some people because some people have to be told to love their students. Some people have to be told to go beyond the walls of the classroom. And some administrators truly assume that teachers know what that means. 
all teachers don't know what that means. And then when they broke it down and, and I started learning about social emotional learning, I was like, dang, oh, okay. That's a little next level. I wasn't thinking about it completely like that. So I want to talk about completely like that tonight. So what is social and emotional learning? Social and emotional learning is the process through which children and adults, this is not something just for the kids, all right? So children and adults understand and manage emotions. We all need to work on managing our emotions. We have our key key moments. Come on now. Let's go. I would have played the song, but you know, they'll block me. All right. They'll be the muted all of it and set and achieve positive goals. We need to work on that. Feel and show empathy for others. Establish and maintain positive relationships and make responsible decisions. That is what social and emotional learning is. Do we know that? Do we think about that? Do we actually have a feel for that? Or are we just checking the box? Social and emotional, we did that, that lesson they gave us. All right, so here are the components of social and emotional learning. Self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship management, responsible decision-making. This is not the academic. This is truly what makes us that teacher. This is it right here. This is what makes us that teacher. We, we function in this lane right here. We function in a lane of social and emotional learning because we give to our kids so much. We give to our kids and we help them in all of these areas. But now there's a curriculum and different things that come with it. But when people start talking about the buzzwords, I didn't know what social and emotional learning was. I didn't know we had buzzwords. I call it the three S's and three, the two, three S's and two R's. It's the three, two, the three S, two R thing, because it's self. You got self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship management, and responsible decision-making. I can't tell you that, that this little girl here, that little girl knew that her value was going to be priceless. I couldn't tell you that. Yeah, that's me. Y'all see me? I was wearing orange back then. Orange is my favorite color. Don't play with the ruffle socks. Yes. Stop playing. Yes, with the plait braids in my hair. My mother was, yeah, she had me cute. I was ready. But look, my shoe game still on point. It was on point back then. Look at the picture on the right. Yes. But see, I didn't know that greater was coming. I thought it was end all be all. So I didn't know greater was coming. So I got twisted up in that thing. I just didn't know. But see, when you're in it, you don't know that you need to understand self-awareness, self-management, and all of those things. You don't understand how important that is. And, and understanding social awareness. Because, see, when you get here, when you're that little girl, you're, you're that baby. You don't know. That baby doesn't understand that everything's going to be all right. But you, as the educator, that, that teacher, you have to go to the next level for your babies because they don't understand. And I didn't understand that self piece. And when I was growing up, I wanted to please everyone else. And you have those students. So you have those students that want to please everyone else or they want to control everyone else or they want to just do everything. You have those kids. You have the introverts and the extroverts. Do you think about that? But the love that I began to receive when I was that girl, when I was that baby, that baby. Yes. I had to learn. So here's the deal. So we have the social and emotional learning standards, right? But there are some for the classroom, the district, and the family. Do we think about the social and emotional learning standards for the family? That's a little different from the classroom. And the district has a bigger goal. So we have to understand how all of these pieces begin to fit together. I know we go to the social and emotional learning PDs, but do we walk away with something? Do we walk away with tangible things? Do we? So let's look at the big picture. We have home and communities, right? That's family and community partnership. So when you say family, that's not necessarily just a community. It takes a village, all of that, right? And then as a school, you have to work on that. And sometimes you have to do it for your own classroom. You have to create the family and the community, but understand it's still a part of it. That's the outer rim. That's where the kids, before they get, they start learning there, right? Then you have your, your school 
And then you have the social, so social wide practices and policies. So that's walking in the hallway, cafeteria, the big picture. And then let's get a little bit closer. So you have the classroom. So look at the circle that you have there, all of the circles, look at the top and I'm coming from the top, but I'm connecting it to what's at the bottom. So now the classroom, you're dealing with your SEL resources and instructions. So now you have more detail oriented stuff. And you're teaching them. But guess what? Has anyone ever thought about teaching the parents what the SEL is? Have we thought about teaching the parents how to do it at home? Parenting doesn't come with a with a manual, but in you, you begin to parent and you keep parenting. And nobody stops you and helps you to hear some strategies. You start implementing the things you did as a kid. Because you, because you don't know. You truly don't know. And as a teacher, you don't think about, you think about the curriculum until you become that teacher. That's why becoming that teacher is so important. Now we have those, but what is, what, what is the components? What are they? What is each one? So we have social awareness, recognizing one's emotions and values as well as one's strength and challenges. So recognize that you have challenges, but you also have strengths. Let's not tell kids they're smart. Let's tell them that you have a strength. You have a superpower. Because smart is not like, you can't, how do you define smart? This is a strength right here. The way you read out loud, that you, that's a strength. And don't use the word weakness, use limitations. Because it limits them from getting to the next level. It's not a weakness. Responsible decision-making. Making ethical, constructive choices about personal and social behavior. There's a difference. And we we can't we expect our kids to know this, but who taught them? Who taught them? And we talked about that the other night. Who taught them? So let's talk about relationship skills. Forming positive relationships, working in teams, dealing effectively with conflict. We don't conflict resolution. When do we teach conflict resolution? When they, when a fight over? Too late, too late. The ball is in the in the catcher's glove by then. No, no. It's too late to teach conflict resolution after the conflict. Let's teach them how to resolve the conflict before it gets to a fight. We have to be a little more proactive when it comes to responsible decision-making and teach them. Teach them, don't expect, teach. Mm, let me write that down. Hold on. Got it. Don't expect. Teach. All right. Relationship skills. Oh, I did relationship. And then, oh, another one with that one. Do we teach them about positive and negative relationships or are we waiting until they're hanging out with the wrong kid? The kid may not even know they're the wrong kid. Let's figure that thing out. Social awareness. Showing understanding and empathy for others. If they haven't been taught that, if they haven't been taught that, they won't know how to give it. If it hasn't been poured into them, they can't pull it out. Self-management. Hmm. We need this. Managing emotions, behaviors to achieve one's goal. Discipline. Let's teach them that. We can't expect our kids to know these things, y'all. We have to teach them. All right. So now these are 12 home activities that build social, emotional, social and emotional skills. Now, here's the deal. Why did I put the home ones? Because we might need to send this to the parents, but some of this stuff we can do in the classroom as well. Let's look at it. You ready? So we have play a board game in sports. Tell the parents, send this home. Tell them they need to do this. Go on a mindful walk outside. Even if your child is in an in an environment where it's not conducive for them to walk the streets, have the parent drive them to a, a, a playground, somewhere they can walk. Even if they catch the bus and it's a family trip, it is what it is. But you have to encourage it. The parent may not know. I can't tell you. I'm 53. I know. She look good for 53. Yes, I do. I've never gone on a walk with my parents. I never went on a walk with my parents. It is what it is, but our kids don't know that you have to, you might have to put, plant that seed in the parents. 
and let's go write in a journal or a diary so you can make that a class activity you can do a virtual a virtual journal a virtual diary and but you make it a journal and it can be something amazing that happened today and they can you can teach, teach them to be grateful all right and then it says practice coping skills like mindful breathing that's just calming down teach them that we teach these strategies sometimes we teach these strategies to students when we realize they have issues you know so oh, oh she has anxiety but she has anxiety because maybe nobody taught her how to deal with stress before the anxiety hit practice mindful coloring i love coloring y'all oh a coloring book that's probably why i have so many markers and stuff look I'm a true teacher. Look, I found this bucket at the um, at the Goodwill, but it has these little compartments in it. So I just, I love it. I love it. But I'm just saying. So, but coloring, it's nothing wrong with coloring. You can buy jumbo coloring books or you can do coloring pages and send them home and have the parents print them out. Be creative. Be creative. Stop being, I was going to say stop being complaintive. <laughs> stop complaining and be creative. All right. It says read picture books. How about that? That shows imagination. Let's read some picture books. Talk about character, characters, feelings in movies. How you think she felt when that happened? Tell the parents. You could have a parent meeting once a month. You could sacrifice one night a month with your parents and go over this with them. If you use Remind, it's a free text message system. Text it out. Make a video. So right here, I use StreamYard. This is StreamYard. You can use Zoom. They both have free accounts. And you can make a video to say, hey, mom, hey, dad, look, tonight, let's do this. And then you send it out to your parents or you send it out to your kids in a link uploaded to Google. I just told you some, I gave you free game, free. All right. Start an acts of kindness challenge. You can do these things. Organize the area of the home together. Tell the parents, let's clean up together. Let's do some things. Let's not just give chores where they're doing it independently. Sometimes we got to stop being travel agents and be tour guides. That travel agent tell you everything. The tour guide walks you through it. All right. Now, this one I love. Write a self-compliment list. The parents need the SEL activities as well as teachers. All right. Use conversation starters to share ideas. That would be pretty cool. You can do that in your class. You can just have a bucket or a conversation starter and start it in the thread. All right, play games like I Spy or Simon Says, something where everyone has to play together. Simon Says is hilarious because people do not listen after like that second one. They think they got it. All you got to do is repeat it three times and they, they out. So it would be cool. All right, let's check on another one. So this one I love for my teachers. All right, so you could tell the parents, let's do this. You tell the parents to, to participate in this or you give it to the kids as an act, the activity for today or for the week or whatever. Spirit week It's at home spirit week. Right. So make it Monday. They get to make their favorite meal. They get to make the decision, something. Tell the parent, make it Monday or you have the kids make something today for your mom or your dad. Try it Tuesday. Try something new you've never tried, either activity or food. Water Wednesday. Everyone has to drink two or three bottles of water today. Why not? Watermelon Wednesday. Anything that start with a W. Let's go. Thoughtful Thursday. I don't care. I know your little brother get on your nerves, but you got to have Thoughtful Tuesday. I mean, Thoughtful Thursday. Fun Friday. Do something fun. Pure fun. You can have Fun Friday. So you can have these. Every, like you can have a, a day, water Wednesday. Everyone has to bring water and drink water in class. All right, drink up. So they use they drinking water. Just make it fun. Make it fun. Simplify Saturday. Simplify everything. Let's not complicate it. I like selfie Saturday myself. I love selfie Saturday or sleepy Sunday. Get you a nap today. It's nothing wrong with a nap. I don't care how old you are. Let's go. Let's go. So, all right, Janine says, go into the comment lounge. Janine says, I do compliment Fridays in my class. That's beautiful. Beautiful. You got to teach kids these things. We can't expect them to just know these things. So here's your challenge for today. 
Your challenge is use SEL to connect with your students and your parents. Use SEL to connect with your students and your parents. Let's not just assume that it has to be just about the students. It's more than just with the students. We have to think about our parents because they need the love too. Yes. What? Oh, we got a nice comment. It says, I have always done fun Fridays with both my pre-K and my kinder babies. Yes, they absolutely love it. They look forward to Friday. They look forward to Friday. You could do a color war and divide, divide your class in half and tell them it's a color war. Or if you're teaching fractions, you can tell them, all right, we have 25 kids. I need, let's see how many, what fraction we can get to, how many kids come in red tomorrow. And then we begin to teach. Okay, we have 23 out of 25. Well, what's the fraction? Teach them the fraction. How many kids got on red today? Now they count each other. And peer pressure. Oh, and then you, if everyone does it, it's one whole. You can do it. And I know that's elementary, but you can find things for your upper grades as well. You definitely can find things for your upper grades. Yes. Janine says, I love being able to involve the parents as well in SEL. Yes. Especially on Selfie Saturday. If they're young, they got to get the parents involved. If they old, just tell them, what you doing today? Give you extra credit. Tell me your business. And they'll be reaching out to you to help you. But I want y'all to know it's not, SEL is not just about you trying to teach something to um, just get past it. Check a box. Let's not check a box. Let's check a life. Let's not just check a box. Let's check a life. And I'm going to pull it up again because I want y'all to see this. Two seconds. This one right here, she didn't know. She didn't know she was priceless back then. She didn't know. It's so many things that if I could tell myself that when I was, man, y'all, you know how kids say everybody hates me. Everybody talking about me. Everybody. It's three people, but it's everybody in their world. So that's everybody. So we have to teach them how to get past that moment. There are so many moments that I want to tell her that you're going to be all right. You are priceless. You're going to be all right. But when sometimes when we tell our kids you're going to be all right, we're, we're just pushing their feelings aside. And we're not addressing it by telling them they're going to be all right. So let's begin to show them how to be all right. Let's do that. All right. All right. That's it. That's all says the clock on the wall. Go be amazing. Go be amazing on purpose because you have to do it on purpose because if you don't do it on purpose and you waiting on someone else to tell you you're amazing, you may never hear it. You are an amazing teacher. That's why you're that teacher. That's why you're that teacher. That's why I invest so much in you. I come on every night. It's not about me. It's really about you. Because I hated PDs at school. They sucked. PDs suck because they come in with an agenda. I don't have an agenda. I'm just here because I said I would dedicate and be that teacher. I will be that teacher that gave my nights because I retired from being in the school system. So how can I give to an educator like I gave to the kids? I come on every night with you. So I show up for class every day. I show up for class. All right. Again, that's it. That's all. Says the clock on the wall. Go be amazing on purpose. Let the bell ring. See y'all.